Welcome to our review on explosions. So first thing we need to understand then is what an explosion actually is. So when we're talking about an explosion, what we're referring to there then is a very fast reaction where we're making a large amount of gas in a short space of time. So what we'll see then is that when we're using these explosives, they're gonna cause a large amount of damage. So in the picture down there, you can see the effect of an explosive in a quarry there. And all of that being blown out is as a result of the gas that's made due to the detonation. So the examples that you might have heard about in terms of our explosives are things like TNT and dynamite. One thing we should be aware of is that not all explosives are good and useful. So we've got these substances called combustible powders, which you may well have sitting in your kitchen cupboard at home. Things like flour and custard powder. Now, if they become dust into the air, and we get a naked flame or a spark, then what can happen is we'll get an explosion because they burn explosively in the air. And what you can see at the picture at the bottom there is the effect of these particles of our flour or custard powder being ignited by a spark. Next thing we need to understand then is what this surface area actually is. So that's a term you may well have come across in maths before, but we're just gonna recap how to calculate it here. So the calculation there is length times by width times the number of faces times by the number of blocks. So if we start on the left hand side of our diagram there, we've got one block which has got four centimetre sides. Using that calculation, we find the surface area is 96 centimetres squared. If we then cut that block into eight blocks with two centimetre sides and calculate the surface area there, we find that it's got a surface area of 192 centimetres squared. Again, if we cut that block up into 64 blocks this time, each with one centimetre edges, then the total surface area is 384 centimetres squared. So what we can see there is, the more we actually cut up a block, then the larger the surface area is. So when we're talking about the difference between a lump of a substance and a powder, we're looking at the difference in the surface area. So what does this surface area actually mean in terms of our rates of reaction? Quite simply, if we increase the surface area, we increase the rate of reaction. So the reason behind this is because more particles are being exposed to the other reactant. So that means once more that we have more frequent collisions. So remember the importance of using that phrase, more frequent collisions. So just to illustrate that for you, the graph on the right hand side there, the red line is basically our rate for a lump of our reactant. And then the blue line shows us the same thing for the powder. Okay, so what we can see there is because we've used the same mass of lump and powder, then we will make the same total loss of mass at the end. So that's why both of those lines come to the same level at the end. But the powder has that faster rate of reaction, which means that we're going to see a faster loss in mass. So that means our line is going to be steeper and to the left of the line for the lump. Now, one of the questions they do like to ask you on your exam here is they'll give you one of those lines already sketched on a graph and ask you to sketch out the line for the powder, for example. So what they're looking for there is a steeper line than the lump. And the second mark you get for that one is for making sure that both lines come to the same number on the right hand side when they finish. You won't get more product produced because we've started with the same amount of the reactant so just go careful not to have your line finishing above the other one. 